Hello, Guardians. Welcome to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast here on Boss Rush Games. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deerigan, alongside me, as always, in a new location. Maybe. Maybe, you know, instead of being underground, now he's up top. I don't know. It's it's our lore archivist, Josh Finney. I don't know. I was trying to think of, I was trying to think of, like, you know how the, the NPCs move from one place in the tower to another when when certain things happen, right? I was trying to think of something, but I, I wasn't witty enough. I'm... Listen, the, the goal is that by the end of Festival of the Lost, I get to actually be in a room with light. My, my office has a wonderful light directly above the desk. I have one. I have a little ring light attached to my hutch also. I cannot currently get to my desk, though, because of old furniture that has quite literally in a metaphor for not only 2020, but my life as well, has just kind of crumbled on top of my desk right now. Uh, I can see that uh, that Josh, the darkness has arrived at Josh's house as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, dude, there's gonna, there is gonna be a space Dorito outside any second, and everyone's gonna be like, what's that? I'm gonna be like, oh, it's Thursday, it's Tower Casuals, don't worry about it. Ah, that third voice you hear, we've called upon the Tower Casuals LFG and pulled in. The one and only nerd generalist. It's me. Hello. Yay. Damn, you were like the least excited guest that we had. <laughs> Everyone else is like, "Yeah, I'm so glad to be here." Like, yeah. It's no, me. I actually am really excited to be here. I am a frequent listener. I love what you guys do. Uh, all the all the content, especially Tower Casual. So I'm super excited to be here. Don't let my piss poor entrance change your mind. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Hey man, Thank we've been joining us. We've wanted to have you for a long time. I so. know. We I think we've been talking about it for what like six weeks now. <laughs> At some point, we were like, we should probably get. Well, I'm sorry in advance to disappoint you. That's, that's <laughs> right. it, it, impossible, impossible. That's what I. That's what I said to my wife when she agreed to marry me. So, um, you know, <laughs> Ouch. coming in hot. Yeah. So, uh, so how's everybody's week going? Josh, you moved. I did move. Uh, we moved yesterday, actually. So if you're you're listening to this, we moved on Wednesday, September 30th, and the move went great. But I spoke way too soon when I was like, of all the things in 2020, I'm shocked that the move is what went the best. Uh, the internet did not work in the new apartment. I had to make an appointment today for somebody to come out. He, we you, ran out of data you, on the phone strike. Set these you, you messaged me earlier. You're like, uh, my internet is wonky. I will keep you posted. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. I uh, like legit. The ports in the apartment were dead or something. It's the third time it's happened when I've gotten AT and T. Actually, be the fourth time in a row when I've had AT and T. I've never had an issue with their service, but I always have an issue with the self install. Um, and they don't give you an option to get an actual installer out here anymore. So the guy's like, oh, he's running around. He's like, oh, yeah, I just got to re I got to repower the port and this and that. Here, I'll give you a free power. I'll give you a free power strip. I'm like, oh, it's one of those nice ones with like the flat plug. It's like, oh, I'm going to show you how to get free HBO, too. So I have HBO Max like forever now. It's great. I I'm, I'm thrilled. But I have old furniture in my office. Uh, the air did not work, and Texas is still hot, guys. It's terrible. It, even in the 80s, if you don't have AC, it's awful. That well, sounds awful. Yeah, so we had we had the air, and I turned it on last night because I had it running while we were moving in, and I, I, I could feel the air. So I was like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. And it says it's at like 79. We've had the doors open. That's not too bad. It never went down, though. So we gave up and turned the air off last night. I got up around midnight to turn it back on. And when I turned it on, the air started climbing. Uh, instead of it cooling down, it went up to like 86. But it's but 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 it's a dry heat, guys. It's a dry 86 heat. with <laughs> air conditioning means you are sweating your literal balls off in it, your apartment. No, to me, it means you need another air conditioner. That's what it means to me. I uh, So I took the fan out of the living room, set it on the highest setting, put it about three feet away from my face in the bedroom and turned on the ceiling fan. And we created a small hurricane in there. Uh, thank God maintenance came and fixed it this morning. And they're like, yeah, it's it's no fault of yours. Like the, the thing upstairs, it needs more Freon. Like we got to definitely fix that. But uh, maintenance guy was like, hey, uh, if you guys ever need this, here's my direct number. He's like, I live on site. So he's like, I'll I'll come fix it in the middle of the night if I have to. I'm going to give you all a new thermostat that's so much easier to program, and that'll solve like half your issues. Like, 
thank God, dude, you're the only maintenance man that has ever been worth anything at my current or in any of my apartments. So sounds like you need to buy this place because that sounds better than every other maintenance man I've ever. Uh, this is a guy who could only, he has to be like young thirties and he hasn't had his soul crushed yet. Hmm. I don't know how, because he's the only guy apparently he's, he's the only guy consistently doing maintenance at this place. Apparently great apartments, terrible maintenance people, except for him. We love you, unnamed maintenance man that did not share his name with me. I did share my Chick-fil-A with him, however, today, because he did such a good job. Cheers to him. Cheers to him. Cheers with my Baja Blast that is conveniently in the other room. Oh, man. Man. Now that my soliloquy is over, though. You shared your Chick-fil-A with him. Moving in the era of COVID-19 sucks, guys. It's awful. It's fair. You had to wear a mask carrying in all those boxes, didn't you? Uh, I did not. My movers did. Oh, that's good. That's safe. Um, well, so I, I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of told them. I was like, I'm going to stay six feet away from you guys, but I'm not putting one on. And I know how terrible that, that sounds. I live with a nurse, right? But we're both like, no, we're running stuff up and down <clears> the stairs. <throat> we're still trying. We're cl- trying to clean the apartment still. Like, we're not going to do that. When we get to the new place i'm literally gonna pop a squat in the corner and just let y'all bring everything in i've got a very upset cat anyways <laughs> uh they even kind of gave up on them when they were bringing stuff into the apartment um which okay cool whatever like you're staying away from me i don't really care uh just any time that they were interacting with me they were pulling one up and i we still had them around our chins but it just it's terrible trying to look at apartments just doesn't work in this and moving is terrible too so what are you going to do it's fair it's rough it's fair yeah, it's it's rough but we still have destiny guys we do gigabit fiber has changed my life and i've only had it for 3 hours yeah you know what doesn't suck in 2020 destiny it doesn't suck in 2020 destiny's been, pre- destiny's been pretty damn good outside of season of the worthless Oof. Oof. We won't talk about that one. No, no, we won't. No. But it's on Game Pass now. Go play it. Yeah. Season of the Dr- season of the Drifter was pretty bad too, but we won't get into that. It's either. always the spring season. It's literally always the spring seasons. It's fair. It's true. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, well, this is actually like my f- f- sixth show since last Tower Casuals that I've like done it's been a Corey's had a busy week yeah i mean we're like prepping a bunch of stuff and i've had like meetings with our video team and stuff and i've had meetings with our writing team and also we acquired land party as to be part of boss rush now so land party and trash talk are now shows that are live on our twitch channel and uh hey man that's awesome congrats yeah i mean it's cool i i just like i would i would like to go to bed at some point you know you know know what i mean like i i having a blast but yesterday during during trash talk like halfway through i was like feeling my eyes kind of just be like closing for a little bit you know how sometimes you just close your eyes when you're kind of just like there and just rocking back and forth in the chair and then they had something to say about the Cleveland Browns, and I perked up, and I was like, they actually looked okay on Sunday, but oh, we also yeah, play the Cowboys. Don't get me started on the Browns. <laughs> we also play the Cowboys on, on Sunday. Hey, so. hey, guys, how about those 3-0 and Seahawks, though? Yeah, well, uh, the Browns have never been 3-0 and ever. So, um, You know who's also 3-0? and The Pittsburgh Steelers. My, I, I only know that because my uncle is from Pittsburgh and reminds me all the time. Yeah, all the Steelers fans at work remind me all the time. So There's a, there's a lot of them. There's I, a lot so of them. I, I never heard about it from them until we lost in the Super Bowl. And now for like 15 years, I've had to hear about it from my family up north, which are divided into Steelers fans and Eagles fans. And the Eagles fans always trash talk for the Steelers. I'm like, guys, you, you've literally never won a Super Bowl. Like, likes now you have, thanks to Big Dick Nick, but you never I'm, did before that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I apologize in advance to all the Philadelphia fans and, and listeners out there, but nobody you likes suck. Philly. Nobody likes Philly. I had like, Carson Wentz on my fantasy football team, and that son of a bitch almost lost me the first three games. That was a bad okay. decision. That like, was a bad okay. choice. This is, not, yeah. this is not land party. This is not trash talk. Is it time for Carson Wentz to be benched? Yes. I, I, I benched him straight to the waiver wire. 
how on earth do you not get rid of Carson Wentz if you are the Philadelphia Eagles? Like, they still have that massive contract to pay him. I get that he had an MVP caliber season, but he has not been the same since that. Yeah. They don't have anything else right now. They've lost everything else. Everything else is broken on their team. Yeah, that that's fine. Just, you know, hashtag let Russ cook 2020. <laughs> <laughs> he's he is also one of the only very few good things to happen this year is pete carroll finally reading seahawks twitter and just unleashing russell wilson <laughs> guys i don't think you understand what it means for me to be like oh my god my quarterback has 14 passing tds in only three games this is incredible normally those are all rushing tds from other people yeah we're not relying on on chris carson for like the fourth season in a row i love this this is great. No fourth quarter heroics here. It's, it's fair. You know, you can have that one. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. I have that one. Oh, man. You know what? Tonight's going to be a good night. You know why? Because this is Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. So you can catch it live on <laughs> twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games live every Thursday night or on your podcast service every Friday night. You can, uh, you know... Listen to us while you're trying to get that those wins and trials of Osiris or, uh, you know, grinding for that next exotic. You can just throw on our podcast. It's a good time. I promise it's a good time. Talk about sandwiches sometimes. The sandwich casuals appear. I've heard, I've heard about this sandwich discussion, and I haven't seen any of it yet. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, actually. You know what, Josh? I meant to talk to you about this before the show, but now that the show has started... I get to talk to you about it now. My, I, We have friends that live in Florida, and they went to Earl of Sandwich today, and they sent me a nice, big, fat, original, and Hawaiian barbecue pictures, and I was awfully jealous. Listen, the whole uh, we, we've been over this multiple times. and we, we, There will be sandwich talk later in the episode. We, there we have be. some questions to get to. But the Hawaiian barbecue is legitimately, if heaven was summed up into a sandwich i imagine that sandwich is where the hawaiian barbecue is like the combination of like the dancing cherubs and like the seven trumpets unlocking the seals i think that's how the bible works and it's just it's that harmonious agreement Mm. and like I, i don't know it's it's like it's like da vinci's last supper in a sandwich there's no judas judas has already been yeeted away like mm-hmm. it, it's 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 the last supper if you remove judas later judas yeah it, it's got it's got like triple the peter in it it's fantastic here's the sandwich it's so good oh it's so good i it's so I, good I, met, I, I still don't know anything about this place you guys are gonna have to send me some pictures after the after the episode oh oh, oh. There will be pictures. They it, follow. It's they fo- the world's greatest Look, hot sandwich. Are they, they follow just, us, so you know we're important. We may or the may not have been tagging them in the show notes for weeks, asking oh, them I know. to follow us. Oh, I know. I, I follow you guys on Twitter and uh, and stuff, and so I've I've seen these these things. I'm gonna have to open these uh, these pictures up, you know, away from the wife. If the way you guys are making them sound, they sound mm. not very safe for work. You might want to like go. Sand- it's like sandwich erotica. You might want to go to a private place in your home and shut the door. You look I mean, you pictures. say sandwich erotica like that's a weird thing. It the internet is a place, and you know that's a thing somewhere. It's actually probably one of the, the the least weird things on the internet at this point. Yeah. It's like nice. Sandwich it's... Hub over here, man. It's, yep. it's oh, just man. man. Mm-hmm. Eighteen and over only. Also, it's... I don't know if I've asked you this before, Josh. Did you know that they have potato wedges there? I did. So I order potato wedges every time I go to. That's the side that I get. I don't get chips. Mm-hmm. Chelsea and I get potato wedges. Dude, it, it's changed my life. They're the they're the greatest potato wedges of all time. I, I, dude, no, no, no compromise. No, no, there's nothing to compare with. You, you, you guys just, are ugh. jerks. Well, the, I'm okay, I'm listen, the now. ones at the deli counter at Kroger are pretty great, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but not Earl of Sandwich. Oh, they're not Earl of Sandwich no. good. No, no, no. They're they're not they're not uh they're not wedges they'll get you stopped at uh, TSA and they're like oh what you got there boy I don't mm. know, I'm just gonna you got a foil cylinder in your bag what is yeah that? I've got some I've got I bring multiple sandwiches home from vacation sir this is what I buy instead of uh instead of autograph books at Disneyland I bring you see, home sandwiches. you see all these kids with Disney bags no I'm bringing a man's souvenir home this is a sandwich right. just Earl of Sandwich souvenirs yes they sell just shirts a sandwich hat. 
They sell shirts. If they if they made a sandwich hat, I would wear it on this show. By the way, Josh, I want you to know that this weekend there will be a hashtag sandwich casual shirt going up there in honor of Earl of Sandwich following us. Oh, Christ. So just going to yeah, throw that up is, there. This is just fantastic. I love all of this. Yes. So I'm... I've been that's that was my other project this week was to revamp the store designs and uh sandwich casuals is one of them. So the sandwich, oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, the sparrow has caught fire. It is rocketing down. There is a cabal dropship on fire now. Uh, the, the sparrow has entered the dropship. Speaking of sparrows, <laughs> what if we just got in like a Hawaiian barbecue sparrow to ride around? Sponsored by Earl of Sandwich. Yes. You know, I'm not one for in in game marketing campaigns, but I would absolutely love to see this happen. Josh would spend all forty six thousand bright dust on that one sparrow. Listen, if they made if they made a potato wedge sparrow, I would drop mo- real world money on that so fast it wouldn't even be funny. I would absolutely would, would be the, a problem. Would the trail just be like ketchup, just like spewing off the back of it? No, oh, dude, it's the seasoning salt. It's absolutely okay. the seasoning salt that's coming off the back. Okay. That's fair. Imagine those potato wedges with like the red robin seasoning. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's good. And that... like, oh man, it's campfire sauce. God, now I want red robin. Oh, this is bad. I'm getting fat while we're talking about this. This is, a, this is a bad time to be on a keto diet. I think with all this talk, I hate you guys. But uh, Co- Corey, I think since we have a guest, it's time to uh, it's time to ask some questions. Yeah, it's time to get into the uh, LFG portion of our show. Josh. Uh-oh. Josh, remind everybody what the LFG is. The the Tower Castles LFG is where we go looking for our favorite friends and content creators in the Destiny universe, and uh, we get to know a little bit about them. We like to do this with every single guest on their first appearance on the show. So, uh, nerd, we're, we're going to start off with uh, a question that we ask everybody at the very beginning. Uh, what is your connection to Destiny, to Bungie games, uh, etc.? What just you know? When did you start with uh, with Bungie games and with Destiny in particular? So. Destiny for me started as so actually I completely missed the original Destiny train. Wow. Destiny, okay. Okay. De- original Destiny came. I I thought about buying it. I didn't buy it for some reason. I think it was like it it, it came out. I, I looked over it, and then it, you know like a year went by, and I was like, man, I really wish I would have bought that game. It sounds fun. All my friends are playing it, but you know they've been at it for a year. It's probably too late to get into it, so I moved on. So about mm, six months before Destiny 2 came out, I had a friend. He's actually been on the show before, Colonel Panic. Um, yep. He was like, hey, I really like. I really need to like raid and like do some stuff in destiny as like he's like if i if i buy you the game will you will you play it he's like you don't have to you don't have to pay me back he's like i just literally just want someone to play i was like hey this is a great opportunity for me to jump into the game and uh and and actually play it with somebody and so he did and we jumped in and i mean i was hooked like right out of the gate i finally like got that that destiny addiction that i saw all my friends having like a year before um, so really destiny as a connection for me was a way f- to just like share a friendship with someone else. Um, and through that, I've met a couple other people. I've actually met you guys through destiny, yeah. which was really, really cool. Um, and destiny for me has actually become, you know, one of my favorite games. It's become like the core of the things that I play. Uh, when, I, when I was doing content creation, destiny was like the primary game I was doing for quite a while. Um, it's been a huge part of my life for the last how long has Destiny 2 been out now? Uh, we just crossed three full years. We are now in year four. So, yeah, I mean, the entirety of Destiny 2 has been a huge part mm-hmm. of my life. Uh, it's, it's great. I, I love I love you bring up the, the friendship angle because I know Corey and I both feel the same way. Uh, I've been playing Bungie games with my lifelong best friends since we were... 11, 12 years old is when we met. We bonded over uh, the Halo 2 release when it came out. Yeah. Uh, that's actually that I just started at a new school two months before and didn't have any friends. And just I heard him talk about Halo one day. I was like, hey, I, I really like Halo 2. And he's like, oh, you, you want to play Halo? He's like, my, he's like, my brother just bought Halo 2. Like, it come out the night before the midnight release had just happened. He's like, come, come, why don't you come, over to, come on over to my house this weekend? We'll play it. 
he and I played through Halo 2, I believe, even one sitting. Um, and it was just, it was incredible. We, we tried playing it through two 12 year old kids were trying to play through it on legendary. Uh, one yeah. of my greatest experiences that's continued. I mean, he, he drove me to go get my ghost edition when I had surgery on my legs. Uh, and still, you know, even though he's got, he's got two kids and he's married now, we, that's the one game we still find time to uh, get down and play together. And so uh, Corey and Mitch we... are the same way. So if we want to extend it out to like all of Bungie games, mm -hmm. um, Halo 2, I have a really great story to kind of talk about Halo 2. Um, yeah, I mean, go for it. High school, high school's a bitch, right? Mm. I mean, it's it's a really cutthroat place. It could be really, really tough for a lot of people in terms of like, you know, where you sit in like the different cliques in, in high school. Yep. Halo 2 was, was a game that brought so many people and my school together mm -hmm. at that time. So, I mean, we had, I'm sure like every other high school back in those days um, had, you know, you had the popular kids, you had the less popular kids, you had the kids who were nerdy, which I guess that's a cool thing to be now. Yeah. Um, basically all these different cliques and on, you know, on the weekends, somebody would have like a LAN party for Halo 2 at their house and People from all of these groups, people who would never talk to each other in school or, you know, at football games or anything like that would all show up. They'd all bring their Xboxes and we'd all sit down and we'd play. And it was like we were best friends mm -hmm. and like real relationships were formed over this game. And it like I know it sounds kind of silly because, yeah, we were all just playing a game. But like it really cro like helps people cross a lot of boundaries and become friends that people that wouldn't have been friends. That's how Halo, uh, otherwise. That, that's how Halo One was for me, right? Like, I yeah. mean, in high, like yeah. people I w never would have been friends with, we would have LAN parties every weekend, and everybody would bring their Xboxes. I remember the one time there were so many people that we actually had two full eight on eight matches going on. Mm -hmm. in somebody's basement through LAN party. I'm like, man, I don't know how this is working, but this is cool. We, uh, w when I was, when I was younger, you just kind of share like one last personal, an personal anecdote about this. Uh, for me, it, it ended up being Halo three, actually. Uh, you know, I'm younger than both of you guys. Um, I do. Re I remember the Halo one craze. I remember reading about it. Uh, I got into Halo one pretty late in the game, uh, late 2003, early Oh four, uh, Halo two. It was still really only popular. I was in junior high. I was in seventh grade. It was only popular if you knew what it was for us. Uh, the older kids all played it. So we hung out with my friend uh, Matt. We hung out with his older brother, Chris, a lot. Uh, his fr his friends would play us, and they'd be like, oh, what? let's play four on four or, you know, like eight on eight. And the younger kids always won uh, because we were little uh, snot-nosed brats who didn't have girlfriends <laughs> or anything or jobs. Uh, Halo 3 is the moment, though, that boundaries got crossed for us and a lot of that had to do with the forge creation mm -hmm. um cool. i mean sure we, we would play snipers on uh coagulation we play snipers rockets uh vehicles only uh, cat and mouse we play all that kind of stuff but there is something about the forge maps and like we'd come in on mondays and people be we would have had a land party like all night Friday night at my place or at my buddy Matt's and we would just talk about whatever map somebody had created and that was the talk of the school I went to a small school that was the one that got shared around although everybody wanted it everyone wanted to know exactly how you would made it um, and Rock Band did also the same thing for us uh, as yep. we got farther into high school we'd all go to the football games and then we'd have like a huge party at one of our houses uh, you know up upstairs and uh our game room or my buddy's uh, living room. It, it was fantastic. I, I love when games do that and you create lifelong friends with people you didn't think you'd ever be friends with. My, Matt used to, I, I tell the story a lot. He used to pick on me when we were at, just starting out junior high. He was kind of an ass until he found out that I really liked Halo. Then I was cool to him. Uh, <laughs> and that oh, over the last 16 years that like, not only like through the rest of junior high, but throughout high school, that became the strongest friendship. I think either one of us had, um, you know, they're both for both uh, the birth of both of his kids, best man at his wedding. It's just, it's great when you find friends that you can do that with. Uh, but to move on from the personal anecdotes, we've got some fun questions now. Sure. Let's go. Uh, okay. So if you could hang out with any NPC in the Destiny universe for a day, who is it and what activity do you go do within the universe? So. They don't have to be alive. They can be dead. 
I'm not I'm not gonna pick I feel like a lot of people would probably pick Cade. Yeah. Because Cade just seems like a really fun guy. Also, I love Nathan Fillion. Oh yeah. And sounds like a really cool dude. I would probably hang out with Shax just mm-hmm. because I la every time sh- like every uh voice line that comes up from Shax just has me like cracking up. Just like the inflection, the way he's like so excited to say everything like, like thank you, Guardian. Like it's just hilarious to me. Like I would just hang out with Shax. I would just I would crack a beer, just sit in the background and listen to him call crucible matches because it's hilarious. I would love to go go karting with Shax. <laughs> You're is that all you've got, Guardians? Put the pedal to the metal, Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm imagining Shax as a DLC character for Mario Kart, and it's fantastic. See, okay, so I, in Shax my mind, for Smash. Oh my Ooh. god, dude! I saw the Master Chief for Smash pictures today after uh, Steve got c- confirmed, and they were like, "Give us the Microsoft trifecta." Oh, <laughs> well, like, so I just went from Mario Kart to like bumper cars with Shacks. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That'd be hilarious. Okay, so uh, c- continuing on this, I, 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 I'm really glad that you you brought that up because we're keep talking about our tower friends. If Soraya Hawthorne ordered a drink, an alcoholic beverage, what would it be? She seems kind of like a hard ass. And you know what? She would probably really annoy the bartender. She's like, you just never quit, do you? You keep making those drinks. Ah, man. I think she would. I think she would be a hard ass. I think she would just have like a whiskey, like neat. What do you think? What, what, See, what, 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 I think she drinks straight ass moonshine. <laughs> she, I so think she, she, I think she drinks backwoods concocted moonshine from the hills of Kentucky. Well, I mean, if, if first off, it fits kind of her backstory. I would say that. And then she, I mean, she's got a, a falcon. Is it a falcon or like a hawk? Yeah, it's a what, falcon. Okay, so it'd be a falcon. I mean, anybody who carries a falcon isn't ordering like an, an apple teeny or something like that. That's, 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 that's that. a hard ass right there. I don't know. I I think that she I think she's ordering something straight, something neat, no frills. You just you and your clan just ordering <laughs> drinks. Everyone, I did promise a sandwich question today. I, I promised sandwich talk. If Lord Shax went to the Earl of Sandwich that is located in the Tower Cafeteria, what kind of sandwich would this man order? What, so I don't know. What is his bread? What are his toppings? I don't know anything about Earl of Sandwich. I'm gonna have to Google Earl of Sandwich, like an Earl of Sandwich menu you, right now. I, we're just we're using that hypothetically. What if if the man ordered a sandwich anywhere? What is this man putting on it? Oh, man. Yeah, we have to keep those. Uh, we have to keep those mentions going for the the hopeful sponsorship and partnership. Eventually. I know. Of course, of course. Look, they don't even. Our, I told you they don't even have to pay us. They either just send us a free sandwich every week or two. I would take two because I'm I'm a large man. Okay, I need two sandwiches. I, so I think I think Shax is definitely going for just like white like white bread, like it, uh, so or, at Earl of Sandwich. I mean, are these are these sub sandwiches or are they smaller sandwiches like regular size sandwiches? What are these? I'm sorry, I would say I they're like six inch sub ish sandwiches. I would say. Okay. Yeah, they're. Uh, they're about six inch, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. Speaking okay. of Josh, Earl of Sandwich. Sorry, nerd. I didn't mean to cut you off, but this That's is fine. important. This is breaking news, Josh. That's fine. The Earl yeah. of Sandwich has brought back the Caribbean jerk chicken sandwich. Ooh. So he's literally getting that right from the homepage of Earl of Sandwich. I'm seeing the exact same thing. Yes. The, I, I'm Googling it right now. I have to confirm. It is. It is it is grilled chicken, roasted red peppers, banana peppers, and mild or spicy jerk sauce. Sweet Christ! Give me that with the spiky, spicy jerk sauce. It's like me. I like it. I'm think okay. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the Earl of Sandwich menu right now. I'm I, look. I want to keep it in context here, boys. 
So I'm looking at the Earl of Sandwich menu here. I don't think I don't think Shax is going with a with a with a like a slider here. These are what are these breakfast sandwiches? These look like no, no. He, sandwiches. he he needs he, he needs a man's sandwich. He needs maximum protein. For, you need to for you need to go down possible. where it says hot sandwiches. There's That's where, where you're I'm real at. Sandwiches. Okay. That's where I'm at right now. And and you know he definitely nothing with avocado on it because because you know Shax isn't isn't some california yippy dippy person okay <laughs> he's not having avocado on a sandwich certainly no tuna the the full the full montague all rights reserved is a is a candidate there i mean look at the amount of meat on that sandwich but i also think that shacks probably isn't too fond of vegetables i think the, the more meat and stuff you could pile on that the better so i'm gonna go with a french dip I'm gonna go with a French dip for Shacks. Uh, man, I so I, I mean, if we're keeping it in context, I, I definitely agree. A French dip or the Italian. Uh, I, I feel Ooh, like that, because that would have been my next. That that's been my like next just choice. classy enough for a man who can recite the Tempest from memory. But Shack, but listen, Shacks also has you know some sophisticated tastes. He he did yeah, shack that's up. True. With I, the queen, I definitely with feel like the French dip has to be it then. I uh, you know yeah yeah I think so. Okay. And, and look, I mean. It's it's I think it's this that's a delicious sandwich. I would go for that as well. Okay. Okay. Um if you could bring uh if you could equip a loadout of three exotic weapons. Uh a, a primary, a secondary, and a heavy, uh what would they be? If you could throw all three on at once. Okay, do I have to go in order? Nope. Just tell okay. me what you put on each slot. All right, I have really come. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the secondary first. I've really come to love ruinous effigy. Okay. I don't I don't know if that's a. I know that there are a lot of people using the same build that I am right now. I actually saw a bunch of people today when I was playing. Um, but ruinous effigy has become one of my favorite exotics. I think for heavy, man. Okay, are we talking current? Current meta no, you or can pull, you can, uh, dude, anything you want in that slot, Destiny one or two. I'm gonna stay in the realm of Destiny two because that's probably where I have the most context. Okay. I'm gonna go with Thunderlord when it first came out. Thunderlord when it originally dropped was like okay. one of my favorite weapons. Still one of mine. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to. I want to look up a list of primary exotics. Because, frankly, I just don't want to miss one. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with... I got to go with Outbreak Perfected, man. Yep. Mm. Very good choice. Outbreak Perfected, Perfected is just... It's so good. I mean, it's just so powerful. Especially if you get everybody in the fire team using it. You just can't. You can't beat it, uh, Corey. Real fast, uh, I, w- I want to hear your trio. Just fire them off. What would you What would you put in your loadout? Oh gosh. Okay, so I definitely, definitely going outbreak perfected in my in my primary. Hmm. I I'm trying to avoid the Gallarhorn because it's still just a classic weapon. But it, if we're staying in the realm of Destiny two. Yeah, like, well, you can, let's you stay. Can no, no, let, let's stay in Destiny. Let's stay in Destiny two. Since, since that, that's what Nerd established. Let's stay in Destiny two. Gallarhorn's too easy to fall back on. Yeah, uh, I would have to say, man, I'm a big fan of Xenophage, mm-hmm. but Thunderlord, man, I I've been using Thunderlord lately because I just got it, and it's man, Thunderlord is just fun. Thunderlord was so overpowered when it first dropped. Like I remember doing the Cali encounter, which was almost exclusively you had to use Whisper when we or Sleeper when we first mm-hmm. when it first dropped. But then when Thunderlord came out, man, we just shredded her with that. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Corey, but I just I really love Thunderlord. No, no, that's I I like Thunderlord a lot, man. I hmm, man, now I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna have to go. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go Xenophage in the heavy. 
I I think it's hilariously powerful. Uh, like it, when I first started, when the first shot you, it's just hilarious every time you kill something with with that thing. It's it's hilarious. Uh, but in the in the in the secondary, hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with the old standby of hard light. I enjoy Ooh, I enjoy a good okay. auto rifle. I think hard light is a good auto rifle. You can change the the uh, the elements on it, which is always a positive when you're going into these harder encounters. I I think hard light is a solid a solid secondary choice. I do like ruinous effigy too, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with hard light. Now I'm going to fire her off my thoughts real fast also. Of course, I'm going to keep it uh, basic. Outbreak perfected. Uh, there, There is no comparison for that uh, that opening one. The only one I would consider, even though I'm not a big hand cannon guy, because uh, I need to see how it performs in Destiny 2 before I officially say it. But Hawkmoon may take that slot for me eventually. I like a good sh- sharpshooter. I like pistols a lot. And I uh, fa- fashion myself as an Old West kind of cowboy. Uh, my secondary slot is absolutely going to be Divinity. Mm. Uh, I like playing a support class, and there's nothing better than seeing that giant blue crit bubble appear in Gambit uh, or on a raid boss. And my heavy, I want to go Xenophage, but I'm going to change it up. I'm going to go uh, Whisper of the Worm here. Mm. Ooh. Uh, just, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to keep it with some of the dopest weapon designs here. That's really what I'm going yeah. for. Uh, maximum firepower. If I could break the rules, I would throw that on. Uh, I love Whisper. It's the only sniper I really enjoy using in this game. Uh, mm-hmm. In Destiny 2, I'm not a big sniper in this. I love snipers in D1. Uh, not so much here. But I would go with that, or I would go with Deathbringer. Uh, I really like Deathbringer a lot, too. Uh, hmm. Just just to shake it up, uh, Xenophage is a lot of fun. I love Xenophage, of course, for lore-related reasons uh, and the absurd amount of firepower. But I want to keep uh, want to keep it a little bit different from the rest of the crew. So there you have it. There's our loadouts. Uh, since uh, we got such good answers, uh, I do wanna I do oh, wanna good. give a shout out, an old school shout out. Not as good in Destiny Two as it was in Destiny One, but Lord of Wolves is a favorite of mine. Lord of Wolves is great. I do still really like that gun. Lord of Wolves was a crucible meta for a while in Destiny 2. It, it was, yes. I think it was broken for a little while, wasn't uh, it? It was broken if you played uh, in that Iron Banner when it was broken. You got a special emblem. That's right. I remember that now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was Season of Dawn, I want to say, is when that happened. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe I don't really remember. This has been a really weird year. No, I think it might have been before that even because I I, I don't think I played during season with Dawn. About, yeah, possibly. I I hey, genuinely sorry. the whole last year has been kind of a blur to me at this point. Um, but that is going to do it for our LFG questions tonight. We got some really good answers and had some good discussion out of them. Uh, so uh, take note, everybody else who has to answer these questions. Uh, we prefer to do less questions and more discussion. And as always, keep it tuned in for the next time that we have a, a member of the LOG appear. The call goes out. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, I do have some breaking news here, Josh, for you. Oh, God. It's not really Destiny related. Did all of Sam tweet you again? No. No, they will, though. They will. This week, they will. Uh, there are possible signs of life detected on Venus. Apparently, this is like the third time that we've seen something like this happen. Like signs of life on Venus. Uh, Wait, are we talking about real Venus? Yeah, real Venus, real Venus. Yeah, it's like the first article on IGN's page. Slow news day, probably, but a know. NASA probe may have found signs of life on Venus forty years ago. Apparently, hmm. so there's that. There's, there's uh, well, gentlemen, shall we go ahead and jump into the the twab this week? The twab. I'm I'm excited to talk about the twab. Yeah, we're we're gonna jump on into the twab, everybody. For those of you who need a refresher, the twab is of course this week at Bungie, and the reason why we record this episode on Thursday nights now, so we can talk about this in all of its glory. Um, almost all of this is an update from uh, from Halloween Grandma. 
my good old Eva Levante uh, updating us on the Festival of the Lost this year. Uh, no spicy Beyond Light updates today. Uh, we we thought there might be one, but they have said that we're going to talk bounties, economy, encounters, etc. the rest of October. Uh, so they're going to change it up a little bit this year. The, the Haunted Forest is back, but instead of there being only one chest at the end, there are now going to be five chests for five times the loot. Uh, this is one of the things that they're doing, in, we suspect, in lieu of Beyond Light being delayed. Uh, you guys have both played the Festival of the Lost Encounter before, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Every, I think every single one in Destiny 2, yep. Okay. I was gonna say, uh, how do we feel about the Haunted Fort? So we'll just go ahead and talk about Festival of the Lost now, and of course we'll do it here in a couple weeks when we've had time to play it this year. Um, it, uh, compared to other holiday events, how do we feel about the Haunted Forest? I've I've always been a fan of the Haunted Forest. I think yeah. the I think what's what's the regular name? The Infinite Forest. I thought that was always a really cool underutilized portion of the game. I think there was a lot more that they could do for it. Um, and certainly once they started doing the Haunted Forest, I, I got really excited. Uh, I, like I said, I've done it every single year. I I think it's starting to wear on people. Um, a little bit, and I, I, yeah, <laughs> I saw the little handshake there, Josh. I think this probably needs to be the last year that we do the Haunted Forest. I, I like some of the changes, and I'm sure we'll talk about them in a little bit, um, but I think this probably needs to be the last year that we do the Haunted Forest. It's just starting, like, unless they change something significantly about it or expand upon it somehow, like, way more than what it is right now, I think this needs to be it. I wonder. I wonder if it was going to be different if Beyond Light came out beforehand. You know, oh, man. I, yeah, I, I was talking about this with uh, with Johnny earlier, and or a couple days ago, I guess. And I personally, I, conspiracy headphones. I don't think it was going to be different, simply because so many of their resources were going into uh, not like crafting Beyond Light and yeah. bringing back the Cosmodrome, which we'll get to here in a little bit, but uh, also getting that next gen console experience stable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the content vault, all that good stuff. I personally think they always plan for this and just be like, "Yeah, like who cares? It's uh, it's it's space magic. It's it's space magic. That's why you're back there." Um, I think right now they're focused a lot on getting file size down, and I, I think that reusing as many assets as you can. I think that's why a lot of the rewards are reused as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a big factor into, and I don't think it was ever going to be anything other than the uh, haunted forest again. No, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. If, the, like you said though, this absolutely needs to be the last year that we use it. Uh, it is starting to wear on me. This is the third year, the third year in a row that they've done the haunted forest. Mm-hmm. I believe they started it with Forsaken. Uh, I went ham on it in Forsaken. I was really excited. Oh my god, we're finally using the Infinite Forest. We've been begging for this to finally have an excuse to use this area. Uh, last year, I really didn't play it. Didn't care for any of the rewards. Thank god. Uh, I, there's no greater sigh of relief that goes through my mind than seeing a Destiny seasonal event where I don't care about any of the stuff. Oh man, last year was good. The Braytech Werewolf was nice, yeah, man. I, I, play, I played enough to get the Werewolf. I played enough to get my Festival of the Lost shirt, which I wear on here all the time. Uh, love it. It's my my favorite piece of Destiny apparel that I have. Uh, I wear that shirt even in the middle of summer. I wear it all the time. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be around for things like that. Uh, I, I always like new designs um, and Horror Story the year before, which is such a good gun, even with the fixed roll. So, I'm okay with all that. I do like the rewards. Having a quadruple the loot is... No, like five times the amount. Is that quad? Quinn? Quinn? Quint- Quintuple? Quintupling the amount of rewards you can get uh, is fantastic. That's more loot is always better. Like Bungie, this is a loot based game. Give us those chests, but you can't give us all blues out of it either. Like you, there's got to be a healthy mix in there. So, uh, not to not to continue to gripe yeah. on Festival Loss because I, I don't. No, no, want no. It to it's sound known like I... on Reddit as Festival of the Cost. So <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment. Well, not to. So my biggest problem with it is that it almost always follows Solstice, which is a huge grind for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This year, I tried it. I could not 
bring myself to grind another solstice season. And and that's what Festival of the Lost is. It's a grind. You're going in, you're doing the same basic yeah. thing over and over and over again. And it's after you have done, you know, 5,000 strikes and a bunch of crucible mm -hmm. matches and this for Solstice, you don't really want to grind so much. And so I think having, I think that's the biggest downfall of all of this for Festival of the Lost is it yeah. comes right after a really big grindy period. In, so in so what, one thing so. I will say, not, not to, not to go to bat for Bungie here necessarily, because I do think there's a lot of things wrong with Solstice or with Solstice and with the seasonal events in general. Agree. Uh, one thing I do like about Festival of the Lost that I like about Dawning, uh, well now Guardian games really is they feel less grindy than things like Solstice. Uh, Solstice inherently feels more grindy because it comes in the middle of summer. There's usually not a whole lot going on the back half of summer in the game. We're gearing up for an expansion. Uh, I personally, I, I got my armor done uh, for Solstice, and then I kind of put the game down for a while. I, I popped mm -hmm. in weekly uh, just to do some weekly Bright Dust bounties, uh, get get my Gambit, my Crucibles, and sometimes my Strikes done. Uh, just just do that, hang out with the friends for like an hour or two. Uh but with Festival of the Lost coming, I'm like, all right, I'm going to ease myself back in now, get excited for Beyond Light. I'm just, I'm kind of over the seasonal events in general right now, though. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because for so, I grinded them so hard for so long without rewards in game to try and get that extra bright dust to buy stuff. And it seems like at least with Solstice, with Moments of Triumph, uh, even with Guardian games to an extent, like they are starting to listen to us and give us more rewards that you can earn. And we're, we're going to get to that here in just a second. We're, we're going to keep talking about uh, the, the loot system and whatnot. They, it changed it up this year. Uh, this year we're going to need cipher decoders. Uh, it's going to be a quest. And I, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I have read uh, some of the quest steps on uh, Ishtar Collective. It is up there. If anybody wants to go see it, it's been there. It's been data mined all over Reddit from like GG, I believe. Uh, but you're going to talk to Spider. It's going to be a, a quest that we're going to do. And this, I do believe this was supposed to be part of Beyond Light. Um, and you will earn these decoders from any activity in the solar system, kind of like the Umbral Ingrams. Um, you can earn now random rolls on both the Bray Tech Werewolf and on Horror Story from these chests, and each will have more perk combinations. That is really exciting. Uh, I think both those guns are already fun to use, and if 450s are going to be tweaked a bit and beyond light, those with the right combinations, uh, Vorpal and Dynamic Sway Reduction, anybody, are going to be absolute monsters. Are in, they... Uh, yeah. Are those two, either of those two primary weapons? I can't remember. They're both primaries. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Because that, that the one kind of thing the that I've... That went through my mind, too. The one thing that I've really been hurting for in Season of Arrivals has been a, just a consistent primary weapon. I have so many secondary weapons that I love, mm -hmm. but I have, like, no real favorite primary weapons. And certainly after vaulting starts and, you know, d depending on what we get, but, like, at the very start of of Beyond Light, I'm going to be without a primary weapon that I really love. So hopefully those two can fill the gap. One of the yeah, two. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Seeing, uh, see, seeing that made me real excited. Of course, as Festival of the Lost, uh, there are going to be new masks, as there always is. Uh, Eva will give you a masquerader helmet, which allows you to apply your masks as, an, as a universal ornament before you head out. Uh, it looks like the three new... There's three new masks, it looks like. There is one for Spider, there's the Shattered Traveler, and then there's one, I believe it's called the Associate's Mask. And uh, not quite sure where that comes from. Um, I kind of felt like that may tie into Beyond Light uh, eventually. Like, maybe that's a character we meet in it. But regardless, I think all three of new masks look pretty dope. Uh, of course, as in previous years, every mask that you have from those... Uh, can be used here, or if you don't have them, you can earn them. Uh, so really excited to run around with my uh, Screaming Aldrin mask again. I always like to go back and uh, replay the uh, the mission where you beat the voice of Riven at the end of Forsaken, wearing the Aldrin mask and executing Aldrin with it. Where, wearing the uh, the wearing the chicken mask, I don't know if that one still applies, is always oh, yeah. great to just like really rib on people in, in Crucible and Trials. I, I love it. I, I love how wacky 
Loki it gets at this time. Everyone's wearing them. It's a fun time to go do Crucible, go through things like yeah. Gamp. Invading with one of those masks is hilarious. Uh, I, re- I really, the mask thing, it's one of my favorite things we do with these seasons. It feels true. That and the cookie oven feel unique. Like the Halloween and Christmas events, they've nailed. Solstice this year, despite it being a grind, and I think I was just exhausted from playing so much this year, mm-hmm. was actually not as grindy as it normally is, with the exception of the 10 gambit matches. Uh, that was the only part that was like truly unbearable. Uh, if you were trying to go for all three, it was easier than ever, and I actually really think the armor looked cool this year. Glad I suffered through it. Uh, but the event is going to go from October 6th to November 3rd. There are three triumphs you get for opening a certain amount of chests in the Haunted Forest, uh, and you will be able to trade in the candy for three earnable uh, items. A mummified ghost ship and sparrow uh they are kind of standard designs it is the classic original ship design and the original sparrow design but they've got uh they're wrapped up like mummies and there's tape hanging off of them like just things like this are are fun put definitely put this stuff as rewards in game let us earn this instead of buying it so i have a question Uh, you, you you said candy and and this is kind of off topic but it just really got me thinking and and you guys could both answer this i'd really like to hear you think out of all of the NPCs in the tower, if we were trick or treating, who gives out the best candy, and what would they give out? Oh, oh I feel like it. To me, it's got to be Drifter or it's got to be Shax. Uh, it's it of of living characters. It's got to be those guys. Yeah, you know, you know, like uh, I fact, Saint fourteen out, may like, be apples. up there too. Saint fourteen may be up there. You think? You know who's He's not probably up giving there. out like protein bars or something, dude. I th- <laughs> no, I I don't think he gives out protein bars. I I think Shax is the guy. He he's the guy that like if you go to a rich neighborhood, they just give you a full on king size like <laughs> Snickers or something. Uh, drifter, right. I feel like get, he's like here you go, here's one piece for each of you. And then like when all the other kids turn, he's like, hey, you're my favorite kid in the neighborhood because you don't annoy me. Here's like five extra pieces of candy. What? But what kind of candy is he giving out? Uh, what's Drifter? Man, I feel like Drifter is giving out like all the special limited edition M and M's. Okay, okay. Uh, Saint fourteen, on the other hand, though, I don't think he's giving out power bars. He strikes me as the kind of guy who gives out the all pink Starburst. Mm. Oh man, mm. the, 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 mm. the, I'm all in on that. The manliest candy, the best candy, my favorite candy. Uh, straight up pink Starburst. Mm. The, the, Corey, the the flavor reds are so great. Yeah. Corey, what do you got? I mean, I feel like I feel like the drifter would give out great candy, but it's it's there's something wrong with it. Yes. Like, like maybe it's <laughs> like maybe it's like the greatest candy, but it's like maybe it's stale. Oh, he or, gives like dude, watch that guy give like birdie bots or something. Yeah. Or like, you know, I kind of feel like hmm. You know who's not giving out great candy though? I feel like I feel like Zavala is not giving out great candy. I feel like yeah. I feel like Zavala is the is the house on the block that gives you like I don't toothbrush. know toothbrush. Yeah, like yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Like we a did get a toothbrush like, in Festival of the Lost last year from Eris. I'd like to note that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Sounds right. I, I actually think Zavala gives out something slightly better. I think the Cryptarch is Cryptarch is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Cryptarch is terrible. Maybe Zavala just gives like, you like. Maybe he's like the pretzel guy or like the popcorn ball guy. Dude, okay, listen, I'm the pretzel guy, so... Pretzel day, man. Pretzel day is the best day. Dude, I give out little bags of uh, roll golds to people who come by because I live in an apartment complex, so no kids come trick-or-treating here. So I buy them as justification to keep those or like the cheese it bags for myself. Hmm. It's just drunk college kids and you just hand out Hot Pockets and like pizza Dude. rolls. <laughs> Pizza I, uh, rolls would be yeah, awesome. There, there, was, there, was <laughs> yes, my, there, there was a house when I was living with my aunt. Uh, they would make a uh, hot apple cider, Ooh, and nice. uh, so they they would they would they would give they wouldn't give out candy, but they'd give out like cups of cider or apple juice to the kids as they came by. But they had spiked cider for the adults, and that was okay. uh, whenever I took my uh, cousin trick or treating. That was absolutely my favorite house to go to. Nice. So. Well, uh, thank yeah. you for indulging my question, guys. I, I that one just popped. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Hey, this is a two-way street, man. Uh, let's see, other things that they've got. Uh, they do have a really awesome emblem. If you guys haven't 
haven't seen this in the Schwab. Uh, it it is cool. all these pyramids, the sun-setting planets with a skull on it. Really like that. And you can get the wrapped ghost as a pin. I low-key love collecting pins, so I'm really excited to add a ghost to my pin board. Uh, I like to put them up in my cubicle at work if I had a cubicle to go back to right now. Oh, I missed uh, the part. Yeah, I missed the part where that was actually a pin. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I I saw it. Uh, it took me a couple times of rereading. I was like, why are they giving away a sticker? And then I realized it was a pin, and that makes me happier than getting another shirt, frankly. Uh, I'm a sucker for those uh, physical rewards with the money uh, going to charity, of course, helping the Bungie Foundation. Uh, some of the other little things that we need to know about this event, uh, 750 to enter the Haunted Forest. You can hold 25 decoders before you need to go open the chests up in, in the Haunted Forest. Earnable masks and masks available for, for silver and bright dust. No triumphs involving masks will require masks from Eververse, however. Um, that's a very welcome thing to hear because I think the only masks I'm missing at this point are from Eververse. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's where the spider one is going to be at and the broken traveler. Uh, bounties are coming back from last year and will offer bright dust, of course, and all Eververse items will be available for both silver and bright dust with the exception of the new finisher, which we don't know what it looks like yet. That will only be up for silver as is tradition at this point. I'm just really glad they're giving us a few uh, a few cosmetics in the event. I really feel like they're starting to listen to people, and instead of just giving us emblems, they're like, "All right, here's a ghost, here's a sparrow, here's a ship." They did this during uh, the festival as well, or during uh, Solstice and, and Age of Triumph as well. Really wish they would have given us uh, that awesome, like lightning-looking ship that I had to buy for two thousand bright dust. But uh, yeah. Yeah, guys, I think the, the rewards look really good here. I like the random rolls on the guns, too. Instead of just shoving a new fixed roll down our throat that we're going to get to use for like two months before the meta changes. Yeah, that was the biggest bummer, I think, about last year. Is that the it immediately best roll, became obsolete. The, well, the best roll, also the best roll that you could get on the Braytech Werewolf, I think, was the uh, was the, the fixed roll that you get from the first one. So there was really no grinding, right? <laughs> fixed roll. There were no random rolls on it. Are you sure? Oh, okay. I, I must be. I must not be remembering correctly. Yeah, then we're still able to pull it from collections. Okay. Yep. That makes uh, sense. That yep. and uh, horror story you could pull since they were uh, they were masterworked fixed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's there. I I I love the idea of of being able to get some random rolls on those. Um, I think we have some really good perks. Like I said, I think the game is hungry for some really good primaries right now so i mean i'll definitely be grinding those two uh horror story was a origin story and horror story were both two of my favorite weapons from yeah. year one slash year one and a half so i'll i'll definitely be grabbing both of those for sure yeah i want to go get a couple of these rolls uh, especially like i said with vorpal and dynamics way if those are both in the loop in the perk pool i'd really like to go get those yeah um yeah court cory any thoughts on uh festival before we move on from this portion of the twab i'm making sure i didn't miss anything real fast uh no i mean i'll run through it but i mean it's i i just think it's time for something a little bit new for this uh event not that festival of the lost needs to go away but just incorporate <laughs> something new within it you know the haunted forest uh, is uh it's, it's overstated <laughs> yeah it's welcome that's all Mm -hmm. The one thing I will note, uh, Corey and I talked about the armor a few weeks ago when we saw the leak. Uh, the armor has been officially revealed, though. And, of course, it's like most seasonal or most uh, special event sets. It is reskinned armor. But, man, this armor actually looks really dope, I think. For all I'm excited. Classes. I'm excited for the for the armor. I, I really like... I mean, I, I think my least favorite set is the Titan set, yep. um, which I probably won't grind anyway. Um, nothing against Titans. It's just, you know, towards the end of the season, I really probably won't have time to do all three. But uh, for me, I think all of the sets look great, especially Hunters and the Warlock gear. looks pretty cool. My, so he, here is, uh, you know, I referenced this earlier as Festival of the Cost. Um, this continues to be my one big gripe with Destiny and with its seasonal events. I understand you can't give away the armor in-game every single year uh, or for every single event rather like you do for solstice uh, i do think it's fairly generous and the armor was really good this year uh which takes away the sting of this a little bit more this armor is only available in eververse much like the christmas set 
um, mm-hmm. and the Guardian game set was. This time, at least they are letting us buy it for Bright Dust, and you don't have to fork out fifteen hundred silver, which fifteen hundred US or five fifteen US dollars, by the way, fourteen ninety nine. Um, I'm probably going to drop six thousand on that Hunter set, but you have to buy it all as a set. You can't buy individual pieces. Yeah. Um, I would absolutely buy the Warlock chest piece if I could buy individual pieces for like a thousand Bright Dust or something. Uh, I think that that leads to a bigger discussion, I think, that we need to have about Eververse here pretty soon of uh, they're getting better with it, but we got to reduce the cost of some of this stuff in the shop. 6,000 Bright Dust is more than you can grind. If it is more than you can grind out on one character during an event to get the armor set, it's priced too high, in my opinion. I, I, I mean, I would... Like, if this was something you could earn for the entire season of Arrivals, I would be less offended and they they have to their credit they've taken out the seasonal sets it's Mm -hmm. only for the special events now that they leave it in and this is god this might be the first time i've looked at a special armor set for an event in like two years and gone yeah i need to earn that set that's an awesome looking set i mean i think i think as players we always feel better when we earn something Mm -hmm. um but absolutely uh, I, I, I don't know. I think I think there should yeah, I think there should always be both options available to the player. Um I, I'm not against putting up a pretty high barrier to getting all of the all of the gear through just playing the game. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, if it's something that takes the entire season to grind for, you know, good good. I mean, I think there's a lot of other content in the game where you have to grind a lot of hours to get it. Trials would be a good example. Um but uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that there should be multiple ways that you can get a bright dust. You can use silver, or you can just grind to get it. I think there should be all avenues. Uh, I would available. love to be able to drop like an obscene amount of legendary shards that I have. <laughs> uh, dude, save those because we're gonna need those and be. Dude, I like... have eighteen thousand legendary shards. You're, oh, you're set. Geez. So when I say like I have materials to burn and I've got them to burn, I, I do think that something that we we miss and myself included, um, I thought about this while you were talking about it, how it feels to earn something with armor not being random rolls anymore. I think that is affecting the decision to sell this in Eververse as ornaments mm-hmm. and not to let us earn them, mm-hmm. uh, which is fine. I mean, you ju- you were able to just earn a set. But I think how you balance that out is maybe like you put the events on a rotation in a year or something like you always let us earn the solstice set. But like maybe uh, you let us earn Festival of the Lost, but you can't earn the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the dawning or the uh, Guardian games or like Crimson Day. If Crimson Days ever gets armor, you know, like you can't yeah. you can't earn those then you have to get them in Eververse. I think that would be kind of a more healthy way to balance it or like once uh it's been like a year or two hey we're gonna throw these ornaments into the chest you have an opportunity to earn some of them to drive down the cost of those past sets Mm -hmm. Uh, i I think those are avenues that bungie can and frankly should explore if they plan on staying in destiny 2 for for a few more years uh i don't want to see seven sets pop up two years from now every time festival of the lost rolls around yeah. And be like, oh my god, like if I'm a new player, I'm looking at going, oh my god, they want me to spend all this money for all this cool looking armor. Like, what if I could just earn it instead? Yeah. <clears throat> or, you know, go back to how you used to do events. Give give uh give your normal bright engrams for leveling up, but give uh give us a special event engram. I would grind out more levels if they would give an event engram like every two or three levels just for the duration of Festival of the Lost or something. To earn or, older cosmetics. Or do some kind of like smaller uh like I don't want to call it a seasonal pass because that's what we already have, but do like an event pass or something that's very cheap. You grind mm-hmm. through, you know, twenty 25 levels of it so there's still you're still encouraging people to participate in activities but you're rewarding them at different steps with the armor set pieces if you like 2.99 for for the yeah, seat, dude, for you, a, I, I would pay up to i think i would pay up to six bucks i'd pay up to 5.99 yep. for an event pass 100 100 would do that and and uh, give at, at various <laughs> steps you're giving other things like shards and all these other things i think that would yeah. be a better way for them to present that mm-hmm. i think that'd be a much better way and like maybe like hey here's an extra like thousand bright dust to put towards if you want to get yep. the 
the armor set from this season, or, you know, like, let us earn the armor set from this season, but here's a thousand to put towards uh, a past set or towards uh, a finisher or something that you want. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of ways, and uh, again, we'll, we'll do a deep dive on Eververse probably in the next couple of weeks, because there's a lot that needs to be said about that in particular mm-hmm. right now. And it's also going to change a lot probably coming soon. Yeah, I imagine I mean, once we get into like transmog and stuff like that, it's going to change. The uh, they, whole... they did address that at the end of the Chwab today. They said uh, we will be talking about the economy uh, this or uh, maybe it's not in the Chwab. Um, it might have been a comment on Reddit that uh, Cosmo or Damage made. They're going to talk about um, the economy in the coming weeks. That is one of the most pressing things we have for beyond before Beyond Light. Uh, and they did say in a Twitter comment, I think it was uh, Damage who said it, do not expect to see any news on Transmog until after Beyond Light launches, mm. uh, which, of course, is not making the player base happy. Some of us have two, three pages of armor stored up in our vaults because we're afraid to delete them. Uh, I mean, a little tight. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, pe- just keep the armor. It's not that big of a deal. Well, so the, the problem is a lot of that armor is from sunsetting activity, so we can't just go re-earn it. But you know, you're here. You're trying to hold on to weapons that are going to go forward, new roles. If you play more than one class, like I play, I only play one class, and I I was starting to feel the pinch there for a while. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, yeah. uh, any last minute thoughts on Festival of the Lost before we uh, before we move on to bigger and better business? I don't. I don't want to distract us too much. I'm just really glad that they're incorporating Spider into the season. I feel like he's been an underused I character. I love Spider. I love his character model. I like the backstory. I like our interactions with him in Forsaken. I wish we could have done more with him. We prob. I, I doubt they'll do much with him it, once Beyond Light comes out. Maybe they will. But I just love that Spider's been incorporated into uh, this. I personally think that Spider is going to factor into uh, the seasonal storylines. Going forward, uh, they're putting him into this. There is, they know there is the demand for him. We really haven't seen much of him since Black Armory. He was tied mm-hmm. pretty decently to the Black Armory storyline. Yep. Um, I could see him being uh, a player in Beyond Light just because it's going to be so fallen focused. I hope uh, so. But if they do continue on this track and they decide to sunset some planets next or put them into the vault next year to fix them and make them better, uh, Tangled Shore and Dreaming City will be the next two up. Uh, mm-hmm. I would suspect that he is going to have a role to play if that happens, him and Petrovenge. So, pretty excited. Corey, any last minute thoughts on the Festival of the Lost? No, but you talking about Spider makes me thinking about, you know, the line of uh, hypothetical statues that Josh and I were talking about last week and how that Spider, one of him sitting on a throne with a broken ghost in his hand would be awesome. Ooh. That would that would be incredible. I would love that. I want that, and I want a spiky servitor up on my shelf. Yeah, but no, I don't have anything else about the festival of the lost. <laughs> Bungie, let me give you more money. Yeah, give uh, me things so, to spend money on besides the game. <laughs> uh, going on to the main topic we were going to discuss this week, though, uh, we're going to try and make this brief since we've already been going a little bit long. Uh, we were going to talk about the Cosmodrome, uh, things that we want to see fixed, things we'd like to see added. Uh, you know, maybe some storytelling avenues, some vendor <clears throat> decisions uh, we could see here. Could we potentially see, uh, finally see a Cosmodrome driven raid uh, eventually? Uh, things like that. So, uh, Nerd, a couple of months ago, we put out a call for questions. And one of the things that you asked was, do you think Gallerhorn is coming back in Beyond Light? So, mm-hmm. I want to start there with you. Corey and I have addressed this before. Uh, I want you to answer your own question. Do you think Gallerhorn is coming back and how? <sighs> If it is, if it is, how do you think it's going to happen? I mean, I think I think every, you know, Destiny player who cares at all about the lore, and and I do, I, I'm certainly not as knowledgeable about lore as you are, Josh, uh, or a lot of people out there, but I do care about it. I and I do care about, I, I do care about kind of like the gear economy and stuff like that. Um, I do. I think. Gallahorn is going to come back. I'm still 50 50 on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I think it should? Yes. I would love to see it come back. I think it would be a great storytelling element. Gallahorn is, is the, you know, it's the pinnacle weapon of all weapons in the Destiny universe, in, from my understanding and, and what I've seen. I think everybody kind of thinks of it's kind of the same way. And I think, you know, our, our, story is driving us to one of the darkest times potentially you know 
out there for for our character and for oh, the, absolutely the world the darkest I, I don't yeah think it's and i think if we're going to if we're going to beat the darkness we're going to need we're going to need to pull out all the stops and i think gallerhorn would be the thing and i think having the cosmodrome come back uh which is you know there's so much history with the cosmodrome and gallerhorn you mm-hmm. know uh, I think it's the perfect opportunity. I think having a storyline uh, or a quest that starts in it, potentially even in the loot cave would be kind of a cool thing to do. I, I don't know. I, I think it. I, do I think it's coming back? I'm not sure. Do I think it should? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I, I've expressed this opinion to Corey before, and I'm pretty sure I've expressed it on this show. Um, I would love to see the stories or the uh, the story missions come back eventually in these uh, destinations that are becoming unvaulted. I think it would be really cool to be, and I, I do think ultimately this is what will happen eventually is that you will be able to play through the entire Destiny One storyline with expansions from start to finish within Destiny Two uh, by sometime next year uh, as they begin to unvault these planets. I would actually really love to see the rise of I- the exact same storyline from Rise of Iron around Gallarhorn come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was really the first time that I felt like we had a really special quest just for one weapon. That I mean, we'd had Black Spindle before, where it was a side it was a little side tangent of a weekly story mission or a daily story mission, and that was really cool. Hiding things within missions became somewhat of a regular thing. We had the Sleeper Stimulant quest. We had Outbreak. Perf- we had had Outbreak by this time. Or outbreak would go up just after this. The Gallerhorn quest was something really special, I think, for a lot of us. Though, even if you didn't, even if you got it in year one from a random drop, you crafted it in that. Like Saladin gave you the remaining parts and told you where to find them and how to forge it. So um, I didn't even, I didn't have any. Um, so I, like I said earlier in the episode, mm-hmm. I, I came into Destiny One very late in the game, like towards the yeah. end. Like Rise of Iron had already come out, and I had started playing. And even like that quest did a really good job of like pointing out the significance of Gallerhorn and why it was like important, why it was powerful, and like you felt like a badass in that mission. So, and the funniest part is. The Gallerhorn that we craft in there is like a third of what it was in year one. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. you, but like you said, it feels, it, it captures the feel of being this cosmic space wizard, this space badass. You are fighting like seven or eight walkers all at once with a Gallerhorn, mm-hmm. uh, just unlimited ammo that you're picking up for it. And it is it is one of the coolest things, I think, still. Like, sure, we have things like Whisper of the Worm. We have the Outbreak Perfected mission, which both top-tier missions. The Bad Juju mission, which is really cool. If you bring in Gallerhorn, it absolutely cannot be just a quest line that you do. It needs to be a quest line that uh, culminates in a special mission. Not one I think that's like so balls hard that like casual players are really going to struggle with it, like uh, Whisper and Outbreak, but something that is something that's kind of in between Bad Juju and like the OG Whisper, like how Whisper was when it first came out. It was super duper hard. Something that's kind of a medium sized challenge to where like we're not just going to hand it to you. But if you're going to get it initially, it's going to be for those people who are grinding those high level nightfalls. It's going to be for raiders. It's going to be for PV, PVE, like high level PVE players. And then it'll be slightly easier as you increase your power in subsequent seasons. See, uh, I, I disagree. I actually think okay. it should be a solo mission. Um, oh, I think it absolutely will be. I, it'll be like bad, bad juju, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it should be a solo mission. I think, you know, when I'm there and I'm picking up the Gallarhorn. I want to be the only person doing that. I don't want to see two other guys, you know, or two other people in my party picking that gun up as well. I actually want to be the person picking that up so I can feel significant. Uh, for yeah. me, that's that's my personal perspective on it. No, no, I I, I totally agree too. Uh, Corey, any Gallarhorn thoughts? I mean, I think I th- I want it to come back, but at the same time, I feel like. I feel like the the longer they hold it off, like the the longer like that that myth and that legend surrounding the weapon uh, becomes greater, and then mm-hmm. I feel like it's gonna come back maybe sometime in the spring, maybe around Vault when they you know re- unvault Vault. I guess is that's that's how you say that, right? Unvault Vault. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I would I would like to see it come back. I would like to 
see some sort of mission uh like you said like like from rise of iron maybe i don't know if it'd be like the exact same or maybe like maybe that area gets unvaulted too and you go back there to find gallarhorn again you know like in some sort of Mm -hmm. not the same mission but kind of like a oh we have to go find it because you need it to you know take on whatever the darkness brings on europa right like maybe maybe that's how they do it i i I mean i mean i know i know nerd journalists just said all that but like i think that's a cool thing to do is like we need to we need to take on whatever uh is unleashing the darkness and we need the big guns and now we go search for gallahorn and maybe saladin is there maybe I, I don't know, man. I think I, I do think it should come back. I think it needs to be a special mission to come back. It can't be like it can't be like the multi tool mission, right? Like it, it just can't. It's gotta be something really cool. It's gotta be something uh that you not grind for, but maybe takes a while to get because it is so uh special in a lot of Destiny players' minds. And for the love of, of God, don't make me take it in the crucible. <laughs> I, uh, I I've got I've got one of two thoughts on how they're going to handle this. I always maintained that they would not bring back Gallarhorn until Destiny Three. Um, now that we know Destiny Three is at bare minimum three years off, um, which I think that they're just going to drop. I frankly think the two is going to get dropped maybe as early as this fall. Um, mm-hmm. They should just call it Destiny again. Um, but I don't know if that'll happen until they start bringing all the Destiny One content in. I think by the time the Witch Queen comes out, that too will be gone. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. uh, I I'm of two opinions. Either uh, the the mission will not be there in the Cosmodrome when we first launch, regardless. I could see the mission being given to us uh, next spring. I, I personally am of the opinion that Crota's End will be unvaulted next summer as a three man dungeon instead of a raid. Um, that of course is the raid, uh, the encounter that people realized Gallarhorn was really good for. Uh, nobody had really realized it up to that point, and they were like, "Oh my god! Like you have to have this." We've all we've all told the LFG stories, the horror stories of you could you can't join unless you have Gallarhorn, um, <laughs> because so many top tier players didn't even have it. Um, I was one of those lucky SOBs who got it to drop in my very first Nightfall ever. Uh, nobody understood. I just threw it in my vault, and then months later, we go to Crota, and it ended up being the permanent invite for uh, my buddy Matt and I for months on end to go do Crota together. Um, I've always said that I think, well, not always, but for the last couple of months, I've been tooting my horn about. I think that they will bring the Gallarhorn mission out of the vault when Crota's end is imminent, mm-hmm. uh, when that will come back in, especially since we know the Vault of Glass is coming back. Um, I, that just, now everything is fair game. In my opinion, every quest line, every story, every, you know, strikes are coming back. Every patrol zone is game raids, etc. Uh, my other prediction is that if they don't do that, uh, maybe it's six months later and it's given to us in a, like the last quest of season 15 next year. Um, and we get it going into the witch queen because like you said, you need to craft a more powerful weapon to fight the darkness that's coming. Um, get it before you go into Sabathun. Like maybe that's part of the actual storyline to fighting Sabathun is it's a special solo mission that you craft the Gallarhorn in. Uh, I think that would be really cool. The only other prediction I have is that they hold it all the way until light falls, similar to Corey was saying. Um, mm-hmm. And just uh, the ominous name of light fall and the symbol of the pyramid being on that expansion. And obviously it's two years out. Anything can change. Um, if that's supposed to be leading up to the bleakest time in destiny, uh, it's just going to get progressively darker and darker. I could see them being like, here we go. We're pulling out all the stops. Here's Gallarhorn. So here's an idea. Um, and it, it does tie back into our larger conversation about mm-hmm. like the Cosmodrome and stuff like that. So one of my questions, once they unvault this, is how it factors into the whole New Light experience. Because mm-hmm. part of New Light is we act, you actually start off in the Cosmodrome, right? Like, yes. Uh, you go through that first mission to get your ship mm-hmm. and, and, and fly off, and and then whatever you're sort of like fast forwarded to the future. So. F- 
there's two questions with this, and we can even break this out into its own conversation if you guys want. But like, one, how much Cosmodrome content actually are they going to give us as part of that new light experience? Because now, like, we can further like stretch that new player experience out. Okay, you get your ship, and then you go on to the next mission from Destiny One or and stuff like that. Would it would it kind of be cool if? The new light experience, like as a brand new player, and you could you could help old like the the current player base go have them go back and redo this as well. Like, would it be cool to have like the end of the new light experience be to do the Gallarhorn mission from Destiny One in the Cosmodrome and like get that gun? Like, that's the end of like your new light experience. I think that would be really cool. Um, and I do think like right now, so in Destiny One there weren't a whole lot of like options for huge DPS at once. Uh, it really was OG Gallarhorn, uh, Sleeper Stimulant, and maybe Thunderlord? Like Th- Thunderlord and like uh, Nova. I want to say it was Nova Mortis. It was the Void version of Thunderlord. Mm-hmm. Those were kind of like the big three uh, until, well, and Dark Drinker. Dark Drinker is just still to this day the nastiest exotic I think they've ever made. And they made it a legendary this time around. Um, I, frankly, I, I almost wonder, you. so you just brought that up, like, what What if that's the end of your new, like, quest line? What if we only get, ga- what if we reforge Gallarhorn in a story mission in a future expansion and you only get to use it for that one mission, but it's unlimited ammo? Like it just completely breaks after use, or in a, or in a raid, or Salad. Sa- if it's a raid and Saladin gives you his personal Gallarhorn, I mean, I think I think this would be cool things. I mean, I think yeah, the, I, I think, think you've got to tie it back to the lore at a certain point, right? Yeah. The, the whole purpose of us crafting it in what Rise if... of Iron was it was the we got the last bits of pieces that we needed to craft it and it's actually forged from the armor of the guardians who fell at twilight gap what if what if you take hmm i was now that you said that like what if you get saladin's personal gallarhorn what if what if it's like a what if it's a like you they they make it into a quest where you actually are forging a new not like a new version of Gallarhorn, but you're taking the bits of Gallarhorn that are destroyed and making a new rocket launcher. And like Gallarhorn becomes a, a weapon similar to like one of those, the swords that you take Crota down in, or, you know, like one of the, like a, like one of the, one of those rocket launchers that you pick up in from like prison of elders or something where like, Sports it's, cannons. yeah, where it's just like a, a pickup and it's not really it doesn't really take up a weapon slot and you use it and then it breaks afterwards and then after like the raid it's like a quest step similar to the legend the legend of acrius or whatever where like you have to start forging this weapon through quest steps and you make something not that isn't gallarhorn but like the next like an evolution of gallarhorn mm-hmm. that or like uh craft it through uh craft it through a raid encounter similar to divinity yeah. like you're, if you did all the quest steps before and during the raid you get rewarded with it for your first completion yeah um, mm-hmm. i think there, there's a lot of steps you can take and i do think i i do think it's a matter of if not when mm-hmm. uh or w- when not if uh they introduce this uh cur- excuse me i do think that this is coming back um i just don't know when it's going to be it could be six months from now it could be three years from now mm-hmm. um but when they do bring it, they know the feelings that OG Destiny 1 players have. Uh, and you only have to be a year one player to understand. I mean, like, you, you understand the meme if you played in year one. But if you played in Rise of Iron, you understand the story and the reverence behind that gun. Not just for players, but in universe. And whenever you can have something like that have such huge significance to the NPCs, I think that really changes... That it, those those types of guns should be more powerful, frankly. Like Whisper of the Worm, I think should be super powerful. You are literally wielding a hive god in a sniper rifle. Mm-hmm. You know, like Deathbringer is the soul of a death singer. Uh, Xenophage has the power of a guardian who's the size of a bug now. Like 
These, these are all things like these guns should be, frankly, obscenely overpowered. Divinity is a Vex weapon. You know, these are these are things that if you're going to do that, do it. Like let Gallarhorn have the maximum firepower it should have. Sure, you'll tune and tune and tweak it over time, but it should be a top tier option. I think Bungie's hesitance to bring it back before they're getting close to the end of this game is frankly because they know if they bring it back and it's not the most powerful thing in the in the, in the entire game that they'll never hear the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, almost rightfully so to an extent. Well, I think I think the um, I, I think it has its place, right? If they bring mm-hmm. it back in that capacity, but we have encounters and we have options now that I don't think really we had in Destiny One. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. There are guns not a lot that's... of raid encounters that this would be good in. There, there are guns that serve a lot of different purposes and and fit a lot of different scenarios. Like when we we do encounters where we might use outbreak as our primary damage weapon, or we might mm-hmm. use Zeno, or we might use Warcliffe coil. There are encounters that require different solutions, and I think now, I mean, bringing it back, yeah, let's we can give it max firepower, we can give it max damage. It could it could be cut and paste the same as it was from year one in terms of like you know its its uh, impact on the game, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to have to use it. And I think that would be a cool. It, I think that would make it viable to bring it back in that capacity because you're still going to have other options to to sort of deal with other encounters with. Right, and like like I was saying earlier, we were never really had that like go to heavy. The outside of really Dark Drinker and like kind of Thunderlord in Destiny One, like even Gallarhorn Weaker was dead. like that was the very definition of nerfing something into the ground because a regular nerf just didn't work. Um, they nuked that thing from orbit and it never it, it didn't recover to an extent that they had to reintroduce the gun entirely in Rise of Iron and still couldn't make it more powerful than a exotic sword. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that speaks volume, and at that point, it does become about the storyline involved, and I think it's less about the power. At that point, it would be okay, be like, oh, you know, just explain it away. Like, oh, we've seen so much more of the universe. Like, we have literally dead alien gods in our guns. Like, of course, they're gonna be more powerful than Galarhorn. Like, we're, we're using the enemy against themselves instead of just the weapons of humanity. Like, it makes sense. This is the most powerful thing humanity created. We're yep. using we're using weapons of the darkness and weapons of other people. And uh, the darkness. That's another thing. We don't know how stasis is gonna change the exotic field either. That's true. So, uh, what, let's move on from the Gallarhorn talk, though. I did want to kick off our Cosmodrome discussion there. Uh, you brought up the Loot Cave. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that they're going to do something with the Loot Cave. Like, I don't think it's just going to be like, hold X and hear uh, the, the voice saying that not even Master Raul can calm the Thousand Spirits or something. I bet it becomes um, a Lost Sector. Yeah, that, that's what I was getting to. I really think I think it's going to be a lost sector, or maybe even like the entrance to the Omnigul strike now. Oh God, um, <laughs> I, I could see either of those being a thing, but absolutely, like I do truly hope it's a lost sector, or maybe even like the beginning of the next, sh- like an, of a new strike. Like you, they literally like they make you blow the wall in the backup, and it opens this whole new area or something. Yeah, uh, I I could see something cool like that happening. Um, there, there's the capacity for so many cool things in the Cosmodrome, and I think that and the ship where Cade's stash is at are both areas just ripe to be lost sectors. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking about like a Cosmodrome base raid actually, and like mm-hmm. where you know Cade's stash is, like maybe instead of going up the rocket, maybe you go down. Like you go down underneath it, and that's where like the entrance to the raid is, uh, like some sort of cosmodrome base raid is underneath the uh, like the the rocket base there. Um, just because like that whole section is like it was v- very rarely used in Destiny One. That whole section, right? Like I just feel like, yeah, we went up, but like what's underneath that? You know, there's stuff underneath there. So. That's, I mean, that was just what I was thinking. <laughs> In before they bring Sepix Prime back a third time and make us kill right. the raid boss. <laughs> God, maybe um, that's maybe that's the first raid encounter. <laughs> I am I am really excited for the Cosmic Storm to come back for a few reasons. Uh, one of which is absolutely the Sepix Prime strike. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, I think anybody who played in year one has that music burned into their brain forever. Uh, and remembering the first terrifying nightfall they attempted and hiding in one little room in the back corner because the enemies wouldn't spawn if you stood there and Sepix couldn't shoot you into that room. That was the only place you were safe at. Uh, taking 30 minutes to take pot shots at a boss. Like, God, dude, Nightfalls used to be so much harder. Um, it's not even a joke. Like, the, how the how the master levels are now is how regular Nightfalls were in Destiny 1. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> but it we, was... we also had self-res then. Oh, uh, dude, Nightfall, Dude, that you always had to have, like, some a warlock with you that had self-res on. You, you right? had to. It was... God, dude, you had to have that. You had, a hunter, had to have a hunter with uh, Tether in year two or uh, Sussie and Nighthawk. Uh, it, it's so bad. Well... Those... God, dude, those... Uh, well, we didn't have well, actually. Yeah. We didn't have well in... Uh, no, Destiny. what I mean is is it's, the like, wells with Luna with with luna's i mean to to a lesser extent but you had to have those i i see what you're saying with the the self-res though yeah yeah uh i mean that's the whole reason why self-res wasn't brought in it was too much of a crutch um bubble bubble titan was absolutely the best thing you could have that was me it up (laughs) right at the door so everybody can run through it to go get ammo and come back uh you're hiding in the corner to pop a heavy ammo or a special ammo synth uh to take pot shots I uh, good times. I uh, I'm yeah, really great looking for my cat is sniffing me and presumably my laptop uh, here and, just and hiding second. like w- it hiding in that back room in the Omnigal yep. strike with the bubble like a uh, with you know d- oh man just dude so, there's there's so many things uh the, so many different hidey holes that you had in those sh- strikes and I'm really looking forward because I'm really nostalgic and want to play those again. Um, I want to see that, but at what point do you think that they, since they've said every, everything's on the table now with the vault, mm-hmm. do you think that we get the Plaguelands unvaulted anytime this year, since that's an extension of the Cosmodrome? I was thinking about that, too. And, and this expansion is Fallen-themed, so mm-hmm. could we see the return of SIVA? That was going to be my question, is is what what's... So, I mean... When they brought back the moon, there were changes. I mean, the moon had aged; like it didn't just stand still, yeah. right? Like they had, mm-hmm. she, they she, they even went as far as I think to show us screenshots, kind of side by side before they released it. What had kind of evolved? So, like, like how it's does familiar the, but not too familiar, right? I mean, you can see the passing of time in that zone when they when they brought it back. So, I think I would like I want to make sure that's my one thing with both Cosmodrome and really any content that they bring back is I want to see how it's aged. So, for me, Cosmodrome and Plaguelands, like I want to see how those have evolved with Siva because, like, when we left it, I mean, we left it right after the Siva crisis. I mean, there's I want to see how that left that land. Uh, are we still dealing with that? Is that still there? Like, what's what's going on with all that stuff? I want to make sure that, like, there's an evolution of that that zone. And it's not just brought back the same way we left it. And we know that Zavala, the whole re- the in story reason for why we couldn't go back to the Cosmos drone when we fled the city was that Zavala has ordered a quarantine of yep. the Cosmodrome due to Siva. Uh, yep. I would be really surprised if we didn't see Siva just all over the place in there, uh, or at least maybe in that opening area uh, if you didn't see it again. But depending on how they handle the missions, they're supposed to introduce you to a larger world with Beyond Light. Um, I am curious, like, are those going to continue to be missions that are similar to the opening of the destiny one campaign because that was a pretty good intro to the universe mm-hmm. um you're gonna do that and then like oh when you activate the array and rasputin and all that congratulations you get to go to the moon like i could see them on vaulting story missions as we go forward since the the moon is already in there too i wouldn't um, i wouldn't be surprised if they just made like a like a streamlined kind of take like the 10 basic story missions out of the you know that original campaign or even maybe yeah there was so even, much filler in there maybe even mm-hmm. the dark below like you just take like 10 or 12 missions for the new light you know whatever and and just kind of streamline it to give you a base destiny one story ish just to introduce you to all the planets and stuff because I, I mean obviously you're not going to be able to go to mars or or venus you know but like i mean eventually you will but not not right away, so I wonder if they'll just give you like, you know, the 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 main kind of 
Cosmodrome and, and moon missions or whatever. Uh, I, I'd love it. I And I think, Nerd, you brought up a really good point when you said uh, that Bungie showed us side-by-side comparisons of the moon in Destiny 1 versus in Shadowkeep. I think the moon coming back was kind of a prototype for us what to expect from the Cosmodrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, You had the original zones of the moon. All the the whole uh, Undercroft is still there and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Literally everything, including Fogoth's room, is still there. Uh, The only thing we can't go down and see is uh, the actual Crotas and Raid. Everything else is there, to my knowledge. Uh, it's just changed a little bit, but you had you have the the four lost sectors. You have all of Sorrow's Harbor. You have the area where the opening mission takes place. The Vex Gate that you find, uh, the the Scarlet Keep, the Pit of Heresy. There's so much stuff, even in some ex- even in existing areas yep. that you can do. Like Tanix's ship is now completely explorable. Yeah. Uh, in patrol, like it wasn't in Destiny One. That was a strike. You had to actually load into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think things like that are really cool and really unique, and I'd like to see that in the Cosmodrome. Like, I don't know what you possibly add, but I think you can expand on like the the area where you go to. Uh, a, you did it in Destiny One before the Taken King, but there were like two super invincible knights at the bottom of one of the platforms, and then in the Dark Below, we actually go down there and open it up and go to craft. Uh, or get get some intelligence for Eris. I mm-hmm. believe it's in the Dark Below or in the Taken King. And you you hide in the rafters because the ogres were so powerful. Um, <clears throat> I think things like that are really cool. I think there's a lot of opportunity for some massive lost sectors here, like you guys said. If there's not new strikes, I'll be shocked. I know they're telling us about the three that are coming back, but I think there's going to be at least a strike or two on Europa and probably at least one in the Cosmodrome. Mm-hmm. It has to be, I think it has to be a balance of new and old content because <laughs> like we, we've got a lot of new players who destiny two yeah. is their first entrance in here. And all of that, I, I don't want it's not fan service, but there is fan service to it. Um, that's going to be lost on them. So it has to be like, uh, there has to be a lot of new content there too. I think. Yeah, I, I we don't know how the strikes are going to quite go off either. Right. Um, right. We do know that this, this fall, the only one that will ship with Beyond Light is uh, Will of Crota. So the Omnigal strike uh, mm-hmm. will ship with it. Sepix Prime and Fallen Saber will come uh, the season after, I believe. And we don't know how season schedules are going to work anymore. Um, and Vault of Glass is coming back sometime next year with some Destiny 2 changes. But it's like, is that going to be? Is it going to be the same storyline in these or not? Like my inclination is that it's going to be the same storylines because I do think that that's going to be part of the new light experience now. Is hey, we're going to kind of condense the destiny story down for you, like Corey said. Uh, they they still you know the stranger is still in that initial uh, cutscene, I believe, uh, when you're taking off from uh, New Russia. I played through it not too long ago when Beyond Light came mm-hmm. out. Uh, but I can't remember. Off she top watches. Of I think she off. watches you take off. I think you have to add everything in then up through the end of the moon missions. Um, if the stranger is going to be back in the game, because new players are going to be like, who the hell is this? Like, great, yeah. great question. We don't even know. She's shown up literally four times in Destiny 1, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And as we discussed last week, uh, in Lore Corner, uh, there is a lot of evidence that she is Elsie Bray, that she's Anna's mm-hmm. sister. And with our Anna, spoiler alert, Anna coming to the tower now, uh, I feel like a lot of storylines are starting to converge and it's going to happen in the Cosmodrome. Yeah. On a bay. On a bay. Absolutely on a bay. Uh, so let keeping on the Cosmodrome though, Aldrin is going to be the vendor here. Um, mm-hmm. I think this, it, well, it's like 99% confirmed. He's going to be the vendor. Well, he's um, been hanging out. He's been hanging out in the Cosmodrome. So it would make total yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's kind of where your mix of old and new content comes into play. Like there, there's the old content for new players, like, mm-hmm. or for those who didn't experience destiny one, like, Oh my God, like, Oh, this is what it was like in year one. Okay. This was actually really cool. And then there's the stuff that we want, which is the continuation of the ongoing story. It's one of the, the many story threads that needs to be picked up here, which is Aldrin and Mara. Uh, this feels like the natural next step. I, I said I feel like Mara is going to show up at uh, Europa at some point this year. 
Yeah. Or she'll be back in the Dreaming City. Uh, there's speculation going around on the internet now that uh, since season 15 is just before the Witch Queen drops, that that's when we're going to get the 15th wish for uh, the last wish raid, uh, that that'll help us undo the curse <laughs> or vault the city or something. Like, I, I love reading the Destiny conspiracy theories online now. The, the 15th wish has just been the longest, like... If that ends up panning out, that would be such a brilliant move, I think. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? If there wasn't a 15th wish, they, they've they certainly added it in by now. Like, oh, they, there's one, definitely I, one. I don't think there ever was, but I think Correct. the conspiracy theories around it yeah. have caused them to go, yep, here we go. We're going to tie yeah. this to the storyline. We're, we're going to really fuck with go. people. Uh, but we the talked 15... about... <laughs> Sorry, oh, the 15th wish is that Shax takes the helmet off. <laughs> I genuinely don't think if is it Jack just gonna take is it just gonna be a, a halo one like hack thing where like he takes the helmet off and it's just another <laughs> helmet on underneath it <laughs> I, I would laugh really hard uh it, it's a zavala clone yeah um <laughs> or maybe like I, he maybe he's like just wearing like the paper mache mask from the from the festival of the lost <laughs> and he just takes it off and it's just his real helmet <laughs> I, uh, I I do think that this is really really ripe though for even more so than the moon. The moon is the moon is the smallest area in Destiny One, mm -hmm. uh, and th look how much they've expanded that. It's now one of the biggest in Destiny Two. The ability to do that with the Cosmodrome, I think, is going to be really important. That you're going to need to be able to do that, and I think to that end, maybe they won't introduce that launch, but I do think the Playlands are coming before the end of the year, before, before the end of Beyond Light. I mean, you could uh, even expand out from, like, where you start, like, in Destiny 1, where you're, like, running from the wall, like, into, into the wall. Like, you could expand out that way almost, too, you know? Like, you don't have to be stuck inside the walls. Yeah, I do think there's... So, I don't think they're going to do much out there. I think that there'll be the Fallen Catch parked out there that we've raided before. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that'll be out there, and I think that... Uh, Maybe that's where the I think maybe that's where Aldrin is chilling is out there right on the outskirts of the wall. Uh, he's either gonna be there or he's gonna be like right inside the wall. Maybe in that like initial encounter room. Mm -hmm. Like there's gonna be a lost sector in that opening area where you're first rest. He's gonna be holding a kavas stuff. <laughs> I, I would love for there to be a lost sector out there because if you did the Thunderlord quest during Festival of the Lost a couple of years ago during Forsaken. Uh, there's te there's i don't think it's on, on screen text uh or no it, there is on screen text uh, it's for the quest app it's like you know uh go go back to the beacon when you're ready to leave there's not anything left out here or is there mm -hmm. um and nobody nobody ever found anything out there obviously what if like now we see like oh uh you know <laughs> Aldrin is hiding here uh Aldrin is hiding and uh surprise there's there's a lost sector or there's the entrance to a strike. Like, I, there's so many things you can do with existing assets out here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think, though, eventually, because now the question comes up of, well, with Sepix Prime, like, you, it can't be that they resed him for a third time. Like, that's just that that excuse is going to stop working. Same with Omnicle. Like, she can't have been resed. Those have to be the original strikes. Like, then are we going to get the option to do the, the Steva version of Sepix with that kick ass soundtrack or not? Like, there's so many different things you can do there, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I I just I feel like I want I wonder how they're going to get you like even if they do expand it into the plague lands too, like I wonder I wonder how you're going to be able to get in there from like Well, I guess I guess you entered the plague lands from like I don't know. I mean, so they had to make it a completely separate section in Destiny 1, but if it really has taken over as much of that area as we've been led to believe, I think that you could pretty seamlessly tie that in uh, to the divide now. Just instead of having to divide it up, it's like, oh, well, we don't have to. It can all be the same instance now, because so much of this initial area has been sevified. It's just grown in the three years that we've been gone. Yeah. But I do think that opens up the possibility for things to change on the moon as well. Like, we've seen the evolution on Earth. Like, okay, what if we introduce some old stuff back to the moon now? Um, of course, we know Vault of Glass is coming back. There's a door that looks oddly like a giant Vex gate in, that we've seen in the preview images for Europa. Like, is that where we enter the vault at? There's been the theories that we enter on, on Nessus. Like, where do, we, where do we enter it? Do we get Venus unvaulted in the spring possibly with it? Yeah. Hmm. 
So, yeah, man, I like the, the one the the planet I'm more most interested in them bringing back is Venus, especially because of Vault, mm-hmm. right? Like I I know that. <coughs> I know that you said like there's a, a big theory that we entered the vault from from what Nessus because there's yeah. a there's a vex gate there, but yeah. I that's just... the one in the whisper mission, right? Uh no. Um, so the the whisper mission's on IO, and there is specific oh, dialogue right, right, I believe right. from either IO or Nessus that says that uh the, this this picking of traces from the vault of glass, but that's on Venus, and that kind of establishes that, and that was teased in Vanilla Destiny too. That teases the future inclusion of us going back to the Black Garden from the moon. Right. Okay. Um. So, and I, like I was just telling Corey, like there's a theory popping up. We've seen a giant mech gate that's on Europa, a new pyramidian-like structure. Maybe that's where we enter the uh, the vault of glass from. Um, or, you know, do they simply go, you know, after a couple months have passed and we've all settled in like, Hey guys, Vault of Glass is coming back in April, but we're going to drop Venus with the spring update. Um, and you know, my personal theory that we're, we're going to alternate since they're going to unvault raids. Now we get, you get, get a dungeon, then you get a new raid. You get a, you get a dungeon, you get an unvaulted raid, uh, something like that to really have a new pinnacle activity each, uh, go around especially if we can start compressing this file size now we already know next gen it's going to be about 68 69 gigs when it drops that is way better than the 110 it is right now so how do you think like players who've lived in the destiny 2 ecosystem are going to respond to legacy contents like specifically raids and strikes because like with any game series, you have to have some kind of progression where yeah. the content get not not only harder, but just more. Uh, you get more, and, and as I think, as developers, you get more intellectual, more creative, and things start to get harder and and just more interesting. I mean, if you go back and, and I, I've never done Vault of Glass, um, I've, but I've watched videos of it. Um, I mean, if you go back, I mean, and compare that to some of the raids that we have now, it's it's. I mean, it's still going to be fun and challenging, but it's probably not as challenging as something maybe is like a last wish or maybe like a garden. I mean, what do you think? Do you think new players, players who have lived in the Destiny 2 ecosystem only are going to have be able to appreciate that content enough? Um, I mean, I think so, because I think at this point, if you're still in this ecosystem after three going on four years now and you've played the story content. The story content we've gotten this time around has been infinitely better than anything we got in Destiny 1 outside of the Taken King. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the Taken King is the only thing that's on par. But, I mean, I'd say that that and Forsaken are right up there. I hope that Beyond Light meets it. Just the way they keep growing the universe through raids, through strikes, through exotic quests... Through se- now through seasons, like I think Arrivals has been, if Arrivals hadn't had to be extended by like nine weeks, uh, we'd be talking about Arrivals as probably the best overall season outside of maybe Opulence that either game has had. Yeah, uh, those two I would say yeah, are been the best so far, yep. Yeah, uh, I, I think the only thing in Destiny 1 I think that equals up to it for in terms of an individual season, because we forget how bad the content drought was in Destiny 1. Uh, you yeah. got the fall expansion and that was it. Uh, House of Wolves is the only other one I would say that kind of matches up with that because we got Prison of Elders and there were multiple difficulties, but that's it. Uh, the the content in Destiny 2 has so outpaced that that I think mm-hmm. introducing the legacy content is a way to both appease uh, nostalgia for older players. I mean, we're entering year seven of the franchise. Uh, some of us really want to go back and play seven, year seven or eight, one of those of this franchise. Like Some of us really want to go back to it, uh, but I think for older or for newer players, it keeps the storytelling going. It shows, okay, what are those things that have been referenced? Like, we fought Nightmares of Omnigal. Who the, who the hell is Omnigal? Who's Crota? Like, unless you read the lore, you probably don't know that stuff if you're a Destiny 2-only player. Right. And I think bringing back that old content is a way to service the content that you need to keep refreshing in an MMO. The content vault gives them a constant stream of things to pull from. Even in C, like there is now a, a precedent being established with the Vault of Glass coming in, sometime in 2021 during Beyond Light. They're like, we're not saving this for Witch Queen. It's coming in 2021 in the spring. There is now a precedent for unvaulting major activities and strikes 
and things like that. I mean, why, why wouldn't you just involve the planet? Be like, you have to own Beyond Light in order to get this content. Mm-hmm. Do you think like, and you... I think that serves, oh, sorry. I, I just, I was just want to add on the end. Like, I think that services both you're getting new content in there and you're getting the nostalgia feeling for those current players. You're balancing the old and the new with new activities being added. And of course, too. Do you think, Go ahead, Corey. do you think like players who didn't get to experience a lot of destiny one or destiny one at all are going to appreciate vault of glass the way that we do? I don't think they'll hold it in this entire regard as us because I do think that Vault of Glass has been eclipsed in terms of vault encounter, in terms of uh, mechanics. Yeah. And I think that's part of why Luke Smith was kind of like publicly musing about we're going to change some stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So I I think we I think there I think we can look at some other games as like a good reference. Uh, I, I hate to make any kind of comparisons, but like I think World of Warcraft is like a really good frame to look at right now because mm-hmm. like with World of Warcraft Classic, you get to see people who had never really played that but had always heard about it going back and and now playing this content from you know two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand six again, and there's there definitely is still an appreciation for it. It's not just like the old people coming back and playing it again. There were new players going into that. Um, I, I think it'll just be a different a different appreciation for it. Like like Josh was saying, like you, you get to see the references. You get to kind of mm-hmm. you, you know maybe you heard your buddies back you know three or four years ago who were saying, oh man, you know back in the day we used to raid vault like those were the days and now you finally get to get in touch with that. Yeah. I mean like uh, our, our buddy, a one Johnny, he's, he's never done vault. He, he's never done a destiny one raid. And he is just ever since they announced that he's been like, dude, I can't wait. He's like, I can't wait for you to take me through vault. Like you, you say like, Hey, it's so good. And I mean, to me, vault is still a top three or four raid. And I think a lot of that is tied to the nostalgia, the feeling of when you did that for the very first time, if you played year one, I mean, we played it maybe a week and a half after it launched. I'd never seen anything like that in a shooter. Like a Destiny raid still is unlike anything in any other FPS. Mm-hmm. You know, Division has tried copying it. A couple of others have too. And it's just like it never quite clicks for any other game. Destiny just – and that's because Luke Smith was an avid World of Warcraft player and wanted to design a raid based on World of Warcraft, like how they did it. And I – it's one of seriously i think it might be the biggest jump forward we made in terms of multiplayer gaming this generation <laughs> frankly is the rating system in destiny um i think that i i think everybody honestly would love to see these and i'll say that as somebody who desperately wants to play these four older raids i say this as i like we're we're, we're gonna do a raid ranking eventually we don't have time for it tonight but King's Fall, I, I feel like I speak for Corey here, is still the best raid in the entire franchise. Yes, I I <clears throat> agree. Although I haven't run all the raids in Destiny 2, but King's The Fall. only one that matches for me is Last Wish. But I mean, huh. it took us three years to get to Last Wish. It's it's kind of funny that you bring that up, Josh, because you know what part of Last Wish, you know, you, we've never experienced yet oh my is God. doing a legit Riven run, which Corey, I mean, you you just said you haven't done all the raids. I mean, I, I think this would be a good time for us to just, you know, let's get that last wish Riven run on the books. Let's go, guys. Come on, let's, let's do get it. this done. I I sign up. TBD. I'll do it. Uh, all right. I'm not afraid. Josh, Josh, we, if I <clears throat> if if I sent you. A delicious bottle of local whiskey. Would you come and do Last Wish Riven legit with me? I mean, here's the I don't need to be bribed. Uh, at this point, it is it's <laughs> frankly finding it's frankly finding enough time to set aside to attempt a legit Riven run. Uh, I'll take that. I take that as a yes. I'm taking that as a yes, a tentative yes. It's a it's a very it's a tentative flaky yes. It's like a flaky biscuit that's just listen, falling apart. In but 2020, it's, I will take a flaky biscuit. It, it is because... over it's over 51%. That's all I'll tell you. I like good flaky biscuits. That's true. That's true. Sorry, I no, I didn't no, need to change good. the subject, but no, I mean, it was no, a great, no, was was a great segue. A great, uh, that was a great segue because uh, as Corey's going to say, we're uh, we're going to start wrapping it up here. Yeah, uh, 
it's late. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, not that I'm not having a great time, but this is our longest episode ever of Tower Casuals. Josh, remember at the beginning of this show when we said, oh, you know what would be nice if we just did like a half hour, 40 minute episode every week just to, you know, get our destiny feet wet every week. And uh, here we are two two hours later. You could just you could just edit out all of me if you want. I mean, I think that works best. I mean, to be fair, we were talking for about thirty five minutes before we got started. I think so. <laughs> yeah, and then we spent we're the first half hour. On par with, yeah, we're almost on par with uh, how long uh, it was with a one Johnny. Yeah. Uh, we're we're pretty we're pretty close there. And this wasn't a slow week. We we're skipping lore corner and everything this week, guys. Yeah. Well. Guys, I wanna I wanna thank you for having me on. I think what you guys are are doing with this podcast specifically, but all the content that you guys create on Boss Rush uh, is awesome. Keep up the good work, and uh, I, anytime you guys need, uh, give me a call. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome anytime uh, on anything that we do. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I want to thank everybody uh, for watching and or listening to this show. Remember you can catch us live on Thursday nights right here on boss rush games live on Twitch or on your favorite podcast service. Remember to rate and review like subscribe, smash the bell. I, I don't know, throw the dog. I don't know what else you do to subscribe to stuff anymore. There's too many just, things. Just smash, just smash your keyboard yeah. at this point, you know, just chuck your mouse. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, nerd, thanks, thanks for joining us. Remind everybody where we can find you at on the internet. For the time being, you can follow me over on Twitter at n generalist at n generalist. Yes. Uh, also look forward to future appearances of this man here at some point. Josh, where can we find you? Uh, as always on Twitter at at Josh underscore Finn Finn with two N's. As always. Follow me for more of my moving woes and the constant paranoia over if Target is going to decide to charge my card a million times from smashing that order button a couple of weeks ago. He smashed that keyboard, folks. Yeah. I did. And of course, every Thursday here on Tower Casuals and the ever increasingly regular appearances on Arsenal X. <laughs> yes, we just expect you to be there at this point, honestly. Yeah. Every, every time. That's how I found out it was Sunday last week was... Uh, Corey sent a group message and was like, hey, guys, here's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm like, oh, I guess I guess I'm coming in. I mean, I just <laughs> if I, I just if you're not going to be there, I just expect you to message me to say you're not going to be there instead of uh, you're going to be there. So, yeah, uh, by the way, really happy about what that show is turning into. I, I, I love it over there. I think we got a really good crew. Yeah. So. Anyways, you can follow me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on a plethora of things here on Boss Rush Games. Uh, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Check out all of our content on BossRushGames.com. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Nerd, for joining me tonight on this extended episode of Tower Casuals. And uh, until next week, we love you.